hello guys and welcome back to my youtube channel i know it's been a while work has been so demanding but i make sure the comeback was worth to wait this tutorial i'll be showing you guys how to make a victorian corset a very comfortable victorian corset with a zipper as you can see the zipper has no bulge and it's sitting just pretty i'll be teaching you how you can achieve this this is a detailed tutorial you guys deserve to know step by step how i made this this was supposed to be my birthday dress but because i was filming it i couldn't finish on time so i had to wear this at this point if you haven't hit on your subscribe button please go ahead and do that it's totally free and turn on your post notification feel free to share this to your family and friends who you think would love or need this now let's get right into this tutorial first of all i'll be showing you the materials and the measurements you'll be needing to make this victorian corset with me here i have this crepe fabric which is about two and a half yards as you can see here this is a non-stretchy fabric it just has some strength to it i also have my interfacing here and this interfacing is her stay this is what i'll be using during the course of this tutorial here i have my boning and as you can see here this is not a small boning this is just the normal size i don't know how many inch it comes in but you can see what i have here you can use the crepe for the lining or you get a lining that shows the color of the crepe you have on this side of the screen i'll be putting the measurements you'll be needing for this tutorial you'll be needing your shoulder measurement your bust your under bust your waist your hip shoulder to bust nipple to nipple shoulder to under bust shoulder to waist and shoulder to hip make sure you take out all your own measurements just like i've done mine here because this is what you'll be needing for the course of this tutorial i've already gone ahead to draw out my lines here starting from the top we have the starting line which is also serving as the shoulder line placing my tape there i've already drawn out my other vertical measurement first is the chest line to get the chest line you have to divide your bust measurement by six and add 1.5 to that i have 9.25 here then shoulder to the bust point i have 11.5 to the other boss i have 15.5 and to the waist i have 18 to the length i have 25 so this is pretty easy just make sure to use your own measurement as you can see here i've already labeled all my lines i'll also be marking the center front from which i'll be taking all my vertical measurements and here is the side front the next thing i'll be doing will be to mark my neckline the standard measurement is three inches so coming in from the center front i'll be marking three inches there and from the same point i'm going to come down by three inches i'll be connecting these two points with a curve next i'm going to divide my shoulder measurement by two and i'll be marking that on the starting line which is also serving as the shoulder line and from that point i just marked i'll be coming down by one inch for the shoulder slope as we already know that our shoulder is not straight and i'll be connecting this into the neckline now i'll be connecting a line from my shoulder slope to my chest line to get the armhole curve and to do that i'm going to divide my shoulder measurement by two and i'm also going to mark that on the chest line this is to enable me get a straight line and i'll be connecting this with a straight line the armhole curve divide what you have from the shoulder slant to the chest line by two and mark that coming from the midpoint by half of an inch and mark that now on the chest line you divide your bust measurements by four you mark what you have on the chest line connect these three points together with a curve to get your armhole curve the next thing i'll be doing is to take my dart and to do this i'll be dividing my nipple to nipple measurement by two my nipple to nipple measurement is eight divided by two i have four and i'll be marking that on my bust point my under bust my waistline and on the length or the hip line and connect this with a straight line on the waist i'll be coming out on both sides of the dart leg by 0.75 inch this is not the same for everybody if you have a smaller bust size try and use 0.5 otherwise use 0.75 i'll be marking that on both sides of the waistline and i'll connect this into the bust point before connecting it into the hip line or the length of your corset come up the hip line by one inch and connect it back into the dart you have on your waist for the shoulder dart you divide what you have on the shoulder by two just like i'm doing here and mark the midpoint now you connect it back into the dart you have on the bust point now remember we are making a sleeveless victorian corset now we'll have to mark our new neckline and to do that you come up the chest line by 1.5 or 2 inches i'll be using 2 inch and i'm going to mark that on both sides and run a straight line across 
on this new neckline i just drew i'm going to come out on both sides of my dart leg by 0.75 inch and like i said before if you have a smaller bust size use 0.5 okay i'll be marking 0.75 inch on both sides and i'm going to connect this back into the bust point just like you see me doing here now i'll be taking on my body measurements on my pattern paper starting with the chest line divide your round bust by four and mark it on the chest line i have 10 here and then you take what you have in between your dart and you're going to replace that for me i have one inch and i'm just going to replace that there on the waistline divide your waist measurement by four i have eight after doing that and i'll just mark that there take what i have in between my dart i have 1.5 inch and i'm going to replace that on the hip line divide your hip measurement by four and mark that there now i'll be connecting all these points together after doing that it should give you your body shape just like you can see mine here the next thing we'll be doing is to take our side dart the shoulder to waist measurement in front is usually longer than the shoulder to the waist measurement at the back and the difference is usually two inch according to standard on the side front i'll be marking two inches from the bust point below and i'm going to connect this point into this dart on the bust point here after doing that i'm just going to outline what i have on my bust point now after we finish drafting and we close off this part where we marked out two inches you see that the length of the front and the back is the same the next thing i'll be doing is to draw out my neckline at this point you can determine the type of neckline you want to use you can use a sweetheart neckline or any neckline of your choice to achieve the kind of neckline i use i came down from the neckline by one inch and using my curve rule i just connected a curve to the armhole just like you see me doing here We'll be doing a direct underboss tightening on the underboss line. This is a Victorian corset. So the dart we took on the waistline is not enough to give you this effect you can see on mine. To do that, divide your round underboss by four. Mark that on the underboss line. Unlike other places that we replace the dart, we will not be replacing any dart on this underboss. After marking your underboss measurement divided by four, you'll be taking the measurement of what you have left on the underboss line, just like I'm doing here. For me, i have 1.5 so i'll be spreading this unevenly to both sides of my darts on the underboss just watch to understand exactly what i'm trying to explain i have 1.5 here so i'll be sharing 0.5 to the center front and one to the other side if you have one you are going to take 0.25 on the center front and 0.75 on the side front just make sure you share it unevenly just like i've explained after marking this point, you'll be connecting it with a curve into the bust point just like you see me doing here. Make sure to watch what I'm doing to know exactly how to go about yours. You can see the curve we have here is well defined. After doing that, I'm going to connect this back into the length of the dart just like you see me doing. For me, I know that none of my new darts cross the first dart we drew, but I just want to mention that there's a possibility for yours to cross the first dart that you drew. If it does, you have nothing to worry about. Just leave it that way. The next thing we'll be doing is to divide our pattern paper into parts. A Victorian corset is usually divided into parts. This is what helps with the clinching or snatching of the waist. How I achieved my lines was to come in from the dart point, which I'm pointing at, by 1.5 inch. So I'm just going to come in by 1.5 inch there and I'm going to mark that. The next thing I'll be doing is to come in from my center front at the length of my top by 0.75 inch. After marking that, I'm going to connect this back into the 1.5 inch I marked at the top. You can see that I've divided my center front into two which I'll be reattaching while sewing also i want you to know that you can make these lines anything you want as you can see mine is slanted here you can decide to make your straight or you can just decide to make any design you would like if you want you can leave this line like this or you can decide to take out that on both sides of the line to increase the snatching of the waist for me i'm going to be taking out a total of 0.5 inch from the front waist and to do that i'm going to mark 0.25 inch on the waistline of both sides 
sides of this line so i'm just going to mark 0.25 on both sides of this line and i'll connect it back into the bus point do not forget you are connecting this back into the bus point and then connect it to the length of the dart now i'm done dividing my front pattern if you want to have more divisions you can divide what you have by the side front by two if not you can just divide the center front and leave it that way now i'll be shading out the points where we will be cutting out and will not be needing after doing that i'll just be finishing my armhole i'll be coming up by two inches and i'm just going to mark it on the side like this and the next thing i'll be doing is to take my curve and place it this way i'm going to form a curve all the way to this point turn it and then finish the curve into the center front to cut this out the first thing i'll be doing is to close my side dots i'm just going to cut through the side of the pattern paper and as you can see here i've already cut through my side dot and i'll be closing it up just like this to tape it down before taping it down the reason why i cut this like this and not exactly on the line is because if you notice here the lines are not blending so to avoid cutting this out and then getting a small piece of paper to blend this so just cut this this way so you blend it in and and then cut it out now i'm just going to tape this down and using my marker i'm going to blend this in just like you see me doing here after doing that i'm going to go ahead now and cut out the side of my pattern paper and also cut out the rest of my pattern paper please make sure to watch this carefully to see exactly how i'm cutting mine to know how to go about yours Before finishing up with the cutting of my front pattern it is really important that you label all your patterns this is my center front one this is my center front two my center front one is going to be attached to the center front two this way and two to one this way this is my side front i have just one side front and it will be attached to the center front this way this arrow signify the direction which you should attach them so it's important you also mark these arrows i'll go ahead and finish up with the cutting of my front pattern I'm done drafting out the front pattern and you can see what I have here. Now I'm going to draft out the back pattern. For the back pattern, I already have my lines drawn out here. Starting from the top, this is my starting line, also known as the shoulder line. This is my chest line. This is my bust point and we don't need under bust for the back pattern. I have my waistline here. And for the waistline, remember that the waistline is front is 2 inches longer than the waistline at the back. So the waistline at the back, I have 16 inches. If you remember for the front, I used 18 inches. So make sure that yours is like that also. And for the length of the top, I'm going to measure what i have from the waist to the length in the front pattern or on the front pattern and i'll be marking the same thing on the back pattern here i have 6.75 and i'm going to mark the same thing on the back pattern and i'm going to label this the length of my top make sure to extend your waistline into the zipper allowance and as you can see here i have my zipper allowance which is two inches just like we did in front coming in from the center back i'm going to mark three inches from the zipper allowance line and i'm going to come down by 1.5 inch from the same point i'm going to connect this with a curve just like you see me doing here to get my neckline the next thing i'll be doing is to divide my shoulder measurement by two my shoulder is 17 divided by two is 8.5 i'm just going to mark that there and from this point i'm going to come down by one inch and i'll be connecting this back into the neckline just like this Divide your shoulder measurement by two and also mark that on the chest line. This will be enable you to get a straight line and I'll connect this into the shoulder slope. The next thing I'll be doing now is to take out my dart. I'll be marking half of my nipple to nipple measurement on the waistline, on the length, on the bust point and on the chest line. And I'm going to connect this with a straight line. On the waistline, I'll be coming out on both sides of the dart by 0.75 inch. If you use 0.5 inch in front, make sure you use the same here. I'll just be labeling this my center back and my side back. 
just like we did in front i'll be coming up from the length of my corset by one inch and then i'll connect this dart into the chest line remember you're connecting this into the chest line and not the bust point and then back into the length of your dart just like i'm doing here the armhole curve i'll be dividing what i have from my shoulder slope to my chest line by two mark the midpoint coming from that point by half of an inch and mark it there on the chest line i'm going to divide my bust measurement by four and i'm going to mark it on the chest line now i'll be connecting this point together back into the shoulder slope using a curve to place your round body measurement starting from the chest line divide your bust measurement by four i already marked mine there on the waistline divide your waist measurement by four and mark that there do not forget you're taking all your measurements from the zipper allowance line then take the measurement of what you have in between your dart here i have 1.5 and i'm going to replace that there on the length of my corset i'm going to divide my hip line by four and i'm going to mark that there as you can see here we don't have any that to replace so i won't be replacing any that now i'm going to be connecting all these points i just marked together just exactly as you see me doing now for the neckline just like we did in the front i'll be coming up the chest line by one inch this is totally optional you can use the chest line as the neckline for the back okay i'll be coming up by one inch and i'm going to connect that with a straight line just like you see me doing here and then using my curve i'm going to connect a curve from the armhole into the center back make sure it enters into the zipper just like you see me doing here on the length of my corset i'm going to come up from the side by two inches just like we did in front and i'm going to join a curve just just like this and then complete it into the center back and the zipper allowance just like this remember that on the front pattern i divided the center front by two for the back pattern i'll be dividing the side back and not the center back so what i'll be doing is on the waistline i'm going to take the measurement of what i have from the side to my dart point here i'm going to divide it into two by folding my tape and marking the midpoint i'll just connect a straight line to the top and to the length of my corset then i'm going to be coming out on both sides of this line by 0.25 inch on the waistline this is totally optional just like i said for the front you can decide to cut it that way without removing any dart but i'm removing 0.5 inch from mine so i'm going to mark 0.25 inch on both sides connect it to the top and into the length of my corset now i'll just be shading the part we won't be needing and we'll be cutting out just like i'm doing here now on this part i'm going to be coming out on both sides by 0.25 inch and i'm going to connect it back into the waistline just like you see me doing here this is going to help to give you a very good fitting at the back of your corset so it doesn't look loose okay i'm just going to be shading this part and i'll be completing my armhole just like you see me doing here now to reduce any form of zipper bulge at the back on the waistline i'll be coming in from the zipper allowance line by 0.5 inch and i'm going to be connecting this back into the zipper line at the top just like this and to the length of my corset just like this the next thing i'll be doing is to come in at the zipper allowance by 0.75 inch i'm going to mark that there and i'm going to connect that into the top just like this and below just like you see me doing this is going to help to reduce any form of zipper balls and give you a perfect fitting i'll be labeling this my zipper allowance now i'm going to go ahead to cut this out make sure you watch what i'm doing carefully to know exactly how to go about yours i'll just be shading this part of the zipper allowance because we won't be needing it now i'm going to go ahead and complete cutting this out also do not forget to label your patterns just so you don't miss them up this is my center back which will be going this way i have my side back one i have my side back two which will be attached to the side back one and the side back one to two just like this i'll just finish cutting this out now we are done with the front and the back pattern and as you can see this is pretty easy to do the next thing i'll be doing now is to cut this out on my fabric i've gone ahead to put my pattern papers on my fabric just like this and as you can see here i place my center front at the fold of my fabric if you want to have more boning channels you can decide to cut your center front into two and as you can see here i've gone ahead to add 0.75 inch all the way around my pattern paper 
except for the side front for the side front i added 1.5 inch to the side okay this is for the side stitching allowance but every other part you're going to add 0 0.75 inch i didn't add any stitching allowance to the armhole now i'm going to go ahead and cut this out For the back, I'll be doing exactly what I did for the front. I'm just going to cut out my pattern papers on my fabric, adding 0.75 inch all around my pattern paper. To the side, I'm going to be adding 1.5 inch stitching allowance. After cutting out all your pieces, make sure that you cut out your lining exactly the way you cut out the main fabric and also iron your hair stay to each and every of your piece. We have come to the end of this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to join every piece together to create this Victorian corset you can see here. Make sure to turn on your post notification to know when I post this tutorial. I'll see you guys in my next one.